Welcome to you all. Warm greetings to you. Today we are going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. We have talked about dementia in the earlier sessions. Let us now talk about Alzheimer's disease which is a very common form of dementia. This refers to a progressive loss. Dementia as we discussed in the earlier uh, session involves a progressive loss of cognitive function which occurs usually in the old age. By far the most common cause of dementia is termed to be Alzheimer's disease popularly called AD which is a brain disorder characterized by deterioration of attention, memory and personality. It has an imperceptible onset and usually a slow but progressively deteriorating course terminating in delirium and even death. Alzheimer's disease to go into the history of Alzheimer's disease it was first identified more than 100 years ago but research into its symptoms, causes, risk factors and treatment have gained momentum for the past 30 to 40 years. It was first described by a German psychiatrist and neuropathologist Alois Alzheimer and hence the name Alzheimer's disease that was in 1906 and thus the name Alzheimer's disease. Although research has revealed a great deal about Alzheimer's, precise physiological changes which trigger the development of Alzheimer's disease largely remain unknown. According to ICD-10 classification, dementia in Alzheimer's disease is classified from blocks F00.0 and F00.9 and in DSM-4TR it is referred to on axis 1 as dementia of the Alzheimer's type. Let us briefly discuss the features of Alzheimer's disease. It is a primary degenerative cerebral disease with unknown etiology with characteristic neuropathological and neurochemical features. It is usually insidious in onset and develops slowly but steadily over a period of years. This period can be as short as 2 or 3 years but can occasionally be considerably longer too. Coming to the disease progression in Alzheimer's disease, the cognitive functions of the people with this Alzheimer's disease do not uh, disappear all at, at once, it is not you know overnight. Perhaps the most critical functions which, uh, which are to go at first are attention and memory. There is a gradual decline in cognitive abilities usually over a span of 7 to 10 years. They also may have visuospatial problems like difficulty navigating in an unfamiliar route. They may become disoriented about places and times. They may suffer delusions such as the idea that someone is stealing from them or that their spouse is being unfaithful to them and may become in turn short tempered and hostile as well. During the late stages of this disease, patients begin to lose the ability to control their motor functions. They may have difficulty swallowing and they lose bowel control, bladder control. They may eventually lose the ability to recognize even their own family members and to speak as well. As Alzheimer's disease progresses, it begins to affect the person's emotions and behavior. Most people eventually develop symptoms like aggression, agitation, depression, sleeplessness and delusions. Usually two types of Alzheimer's disease are talked about. One is early onset Alzheimer's disease. Symptoms appear before age 60 years in this type of um, Alzheimer's disease. This is much less common than the second type which we are going to talk about that is late onset Alzheimer's disease. However, this early onset Alzheimer's disease tends to get worse very quickly. Early onset disease can run in families too. Several genes have been identified in this context. Coming to the late onset Alzheimer's disease, this is the most common type in Alzheimer's disease. It occurs in people about age 60 and older. It may run in some families but the role of genes is not very clear. Let us now talk about warning signs of Alzheimer's disease as the slide shows us. According to Alzheimer's association, the common symptoms are memory changes which disrupt daily life, challenges in planning or solving problems, 
difficulty completing familiar tasks, confusion to time and place, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships, new problems with words in speaking and writing. Earlier they never faced such problems but now they face it. Misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace the steps, decreased or poor judgment, withdrawal from work and social activities and changes in mood and personality. Most of these symptoms progressively are seen as Alzheimer's disease progresses. Prevalence of Alzheimer's disease is something which is interesting. It accounts for a large portion of all cases of dementia. Although it is not an inevitable consequence of aging, age definitely is a risk factor. In America, as many as 5 million Americans are, suffer, are supposed to suffer from Alzheimer's disease. While younger people may also get Alzheimer's disease, it is very less uh, common. But it is important to note that Alzheimer's disease is not a normal process of aging like we said in dementia as well. For reasons which are not really clear, women seem to have a slightly higher risk of developing uh, Alzheimer's disease compared to men. And this is this appears to be lower, the prevalence appears to be lower in non-western developed countries like Japan as well as less industrialized countries like Nigeria, India is also included. Such observations had led researchers to suspect that environmental factors like high fat, high cholesterol diet is implicated in the development of Alzheimer's disease and its progression. Like in the other forms of dementia which we have discussed in our earlier session, here also the diagnosis is done with the help of neuropsychological testing, MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging scans we have discussed in the earlier session, the PET scan that is positron emission tomography scan or CT that is computerized tomography scan. Causes can be many, they are not yet known very clearly. However, most experts agree that Alzheimer's like other common chronic diseases develops as a result of multiple factors rather than one single cause. Let us start off with genes as causes. Genes clearly play a role in the development of some kinds of de dementia as we discussed in the earlier session. Researchers have identified several genes which influence the susceptibility to Alzheimer's disease. Scientists are trying to determine how beta amyloid influences the development of Alzheimer's disease. Other studies have found a link between development of Alzheimer's disease and prior head injury as well. It seems likely that Alzheimer's disease can result from several types of genetic defects and environmental factors like viruses and toxic substances. And no treatment exists yet to prevent or stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease. The brains of individuals with Alzheimer's have an abundance of what are called plaques and tangles. As these pictures show us, the plaques are deposits of a protein fragment called beta amyloid which builds up in the spaces between the nerve cells and tangles on the other hand are twisted fibers of another protein called tau that builds up inside the cells. Though autopsy studies show that most people develop some plaques and tangles as they age, those with Alzheimer's tend to develop far more. They also tend to develop them in a predictable pattern, beginning in the areas important for memory before spreading to the other zones. Scientists do not exactly know what role these plaques and tangles play in Alzheimer's disease. Research is going on yet. Most experts believe that they somehow play a critical role in blocking communication among nerve cells and disrupting the processes that the cells need in order to survive. The destruction and the death of nerve cells causes memory failure, personality changes and problems in carrying out their daily activities and other symptoms of Alzheimer's disease as well. And one known cause of Alzheimer's disease is genetic mutation. Inheriting certain genetic mutations guarantees that an individual will develop Alzheimer's disease. In such individuals, the disease tends to develop even before the age of 65 and sometimes in individuals as young as 50.
As this picture shows, scientists have identified certain risk factors which increase the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. Age for example, after the age of 65, the risk of developing Alzheimer's doubles every 5 years. According to Canadian Medical Association Journal, the risk of developing Alzheimer's is ages 65 to 74, 1 in 100, ages 75 to 84, 1 in 14 and ages over 85, it is 1 in 4. Looking at the family history of the individuals, people who have a close family member who developed Alzheimer's disease uh, seems to have a slightly higher risk of developing it themselves. Only 7% of all the cases are associated with genes which cause the early onset inherited family, familial form which we have been discussing earlier of the Alzheimer's disease. Among those who inherit the condition, it may start at an early age. One more problem which is discussed about is Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome have an extra copy of chromosome 21 which contains a pattern that exists in the brain of people with Alzheimer's. As people with Down syndrome have a large amount of a protein than others, their risk of developing the disease is greater. Another risk factor is head injuries. Some studies have identified a link between head injuries and a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. As we said earlier, there is a higher risk in women as compared to the men. Maybe because women live longer than men and as age increases the risk of Alzheimer's grows. So, the explanation could be women are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's compared to men. Heart disease risk factors are also discussed. People with um, risk factors of heart disease like high blood pressure, hypertension or high cholesterol and poorly controlled diabetes, all these people are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. Stress the present day demon. A study done in Sweden found that stress can increase the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. Certain other diseases and conditions are also linked with a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease like some chronic inflammatory conditions, a history of, episode of episodes of clinical depression, strokes or mini strokes, strokes and mini strokes or strokes or mini strokes, obesity, all these are supposed to be the risk factors. Most victims of Alzheimer's disease live at home and they receive care from their spouses predominantly or their adult children, grown up children. In the early stages of the disease, family members and others may help maximize the person's functioning by maybe marking objects clearly and giving social support. This is very important. Social support is very important in cases of dementia, especially Alzheimer's. But many families either do not know or they deny that the person has Alzheimer's disease. So, an education is necessary. As patients lose more and more of their cognitive function and their inability increases to do even simple tasks or remember every uh, everyday things, common things of everyday life, then this causes greater frustration and leads to feelings of helplessness in that particular person which may result in depression as well in the patient. Alzheimer's families often feel that watching this person deteriorate, it is depressing for them too. Watching a person deteriorate over a period of 10 years or so is unbearable. It's like watching an endless funeral is what some people say while they describe about this process of deterioration in an Alzheimer's person. This slow deterioration, severe dementia related behavior problems, knowledge that, they, that it will only end when the patient dies generally makes Alzheimer's disease much more difficult for the family members and families to adapt to. Alzheimer's patient's behavior becomes increasingly problematic as the problem progresses, as the disease progresses, this creates greater stress in the family. And the demands in caring for Alzheimer's patients can become physically, emotionally overwhelming to the caretakers, particularly when the caretakers themselves are elderly persons, elderly spouses for example. And they themselves have failing health and they have grown up children. And even for the grown up children who have careers for themselves and their family pressures on their own, it becomes very stressful. And this stress in the caretakers and their experience is life likely to affect the health of the caretakers too.
what is the treatment then for Alzheimer's disease? It's a terminal disease. It means there is no cure and it will end in death. However, there are various medications which can help slow down the progression of the disease. And other uh, medicines can improve the signs and symptoms like for example the sleeplessness or wandering around and depression, uh, anxiety, agitation. Basically what is important is medical management. The doctor may focus upon certain things which can slow down the progression of the disease like for example the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitter as you know is a chemical which transmits the neurological information from one cell to the other. Without neurotransmitters, our nervous system which includes the brain would not work and neurotransmitters thus are focused upon by the medical personnel. Cholinesterase inhibitors um, is one more aspect which improve the levels of neurotransmitters in the brain. They are prescribed to treat problems uh, related to memory, thinking, judging, judgment and other thought, thought processes. One more line of treatment research is focused upon developing vaccines which may help clear away any accumulated amyloid plaques. Now what is important as students of psychology is the palliative management. Currently there is no treatment for Alzheimer's disease as we already said and that may restore the functions once they have been uh, destroyed or lost altogether due to disease. At present hence only palliative management measures are used that diminish patient and caregiver distress which we have been discussing extensively and relieve as far as possible those complications of the disorder which increase the difficulties of management. Behavioral management is one method. Some common problematic behaviors which are associated with Alzheimer's disease and with other dementias also are wandering off incontinence in the people, then inappropriate sexual behavior and inadequate self-care um, skills. These are the pro problematic behavior, behavioral patterns which are often seen in, in such patients. These can be somewhat controlled using the behavioral approaches. Because behavioral methods are not dependent on complex cognitive and communication abilities which are lacking as you know in Alzheimer disease patients. These behavioral methods may be particularly suited for therapeutic intervention. The real key to effective management must be seen as preventive. You know, at least as deployable as the first sign of Alzheimer's. Researchers are now exploring ways to detect Alzheimer's disease in its very early stages. This may help in slowing down as we said maybe it cannot be cured altogether but some slowing down of the disease progression can be helped. Now what is important is the treatment of caregivers. Remember we talked a lot about the depression, anxiety and distress in the caregivers and their own stress as well. As the patient's disease advances, the caregivers are confronted as we said not only with many challenging management problems but also with what is called social death of the patient. As the person slowly uh, moves away from the societal interactions and their own anticipatory grief, anticipatory grief of the caregivers. As a group, caregivers are at extraordinarily high risk for developing depression. Providing caregivers with necessary counseling and supportive therapy thus is very beneficial and produces measurable reductions in their own levels of depression. To end the session, let us have a brief overview of the differences between Dementia in particular since in the earlier session we have talked about the dementia in general and its symptoms and causative patterns as compared to Alzheimer's. Generally dementia is defined as a brain related disorder caused by diseases and other conditions and Alzheimer's disease is a type of dementia but this is the most common type remember. Now causes when it comes to dementia there are many including Alzheimer's disease as well, stroke, thyroid issues, vitamin deficiencies, reactions to medicines and brain tumors also. When it comes to Alzheimer's disease, largely unknown but the amyloid uh, cascade hypothesis is the most widely discussed and researched hypothesis today. We, if you remember, we have discussed about amyloid plaques and tangles. Duration with reference to dementia is a permanent damage that comes in stages which we have discussed and for Alzheimer's disease an average of 8 to 20 years 
and typical age of onset for dementia is 65 years and older for alzheimer's also 65 years but it can occur as early as 30 in certain cases coming to the symptoms of dementia issues with memory focus attention visual perception reasoning judgment comprehension all these are affected in alzheimer's disease there is a difficulty remembering newly learned information with advancement of the disease there is a disorientation mood and behavior changes may also occur so while alzheimer's disease is a part of dementia dementia includes a variety of other disorders too but alzheimer's disease is the most prevalent form of dementia 